My name is John Rogers. I'm a material scientist, uh, and so I'm interested in uh, new materials, and in particular, new materials for electronics. And uh, we're interested in developing those materials to enable a future in electronics uh, that you can't achieve with uh, conventional uh, silicon wafer-based uh, technologies. In particular, we're developing new materials and, and ways to fabricate circuits that allow us to build fully integrated systems that have the mechanical properties of a rubber band. We make silicon thin to make it flexible, uh, and that uh, flexibility is just a result of an elementary uh, principle in bending mechanics, which dictates that if you make anything thin, it becomes flexible. So a sheet of paper is flexible. Uh, a 2 by 4 is not. It's essentially the same material, it's just by virtue of the thin geometry of the paper that it becomes uh, bendable and flexible. So unlike a silicon wafer, we can stretch and bend and twist these devices in a reversible way that doesn't uh, destroy their, their operating characteristics. And that kind of technology could be useful for uh, lots of things, ranging from applications in consumer electronics, where you might want your laptop display or your ebook reader to have a form that's more like a sheet of paper, it could be rolled up when you're not uh, reading it. But what we think is uh, even more compelling than those kind of applications is the ability to take this electronics and integrate it with the human body uh, in ways, uh, again, that would be impossible if you're stuck with the rigid, brittle form uh, that conventional electronics takes due to the fact that it's all built on silicon wafers. We are currently focused uh, on two areas, one that addresses uh, illnesses associated with heart and the other that addresses uh, malfunctioning of the brain. And in the area of uh, cardiac applications, we're trying to address a problem that has to do with a surgical procedure used to uh, eliminate cardiac uh, arrhythmias. Uh, one of them is illustrated uh, here. This is a thin sheet of silicon electronics, almost in the form of a, a tape or almost like a piece of saran wrap that conformally wraps the uh, soft, moist tissue uh, of the heart in an open heart uh, surgical procedure that's used to eliminate aberrant tissue in the heart that's giving rise to arrhythmias uh, in, in the patient. It consists of about 2,000 silicon transistors and sensors, and those sensors interface with the tissue of the heart just through uh, a capillary uh, interaction. There are no penetrating pins or separate adhesives, but this circuit is floppy enough that it, you can just mount it on the surface of the heart, and it won't move around even do, uh, during vigorous beating uh, of, of the heart. And what this uh, device does is it provides a high-resolution spatial and temporal mapping of electrical activity associated with contraction of the cardiac muscle as the heart is beating. And it really provides the surgeon uh, a window into the uh, behavior of the tissue that allows them to pinpoint the location of the aberrant tissue. Once they've done that, this device is peeled back and that aberrant tissue is simply resected to complete the surgical operation. And this kind of advanced diagnostic technology allows that procedure to happen much more rapidly than it would otherwise be possible using uh, conventional uh, approaches, thereby improving the, the efficacy of, of, of the surgery. The other uh, application area is in uh, devices that can diagnose uh, epilepsy and the kind of electrical activity, abnormal uh, activity that's happening in patients that suffer, suffer from uh, acute epilepsy as a first step to a surgical procedure to, to eliminate that, that kind of problem. And so this kind of electronics is b built on a silk platform and the uh, silk platform is flexible but it's not able to conform to the highly curvilinear surfaces of the brain so the way the surgeon uses the device is they take this electronics supported by this film of silk mount it on the brain and then simply rinse the entire system with a solution of warm uh, saline uh, salt water essentially and that water uh, dissolves the silk 
uh, which is a water-soluble uh, class of material. It's also uh, bioresorbable, so that dissolved silk you know, flows into the brain cavity, but over time it's resorbed by the body, uh, and so it's completely uh, non-invasive in that sense. And when the silk has washed away, what it really uh, leaves behind is an ultra-thin uh, form of circuit technology that is floppy enough that it can really conform to the contours of the brain and establish an interface between the electronics and the brain that allows for very high resolution mapping uh, of electrical processes in the brain, uh, thereby offering unprecedented types of capabilities to uh, a surgeon who's trying to locate abnormalities in the brain uh, for a subsequent therapeutic procedure to eliminate the effects of that. I think uh, success for us in this area is going to be defined by whether we are able to achieve translation of this technology into the hospital type environment. And so that's, that's really what we're targeting. You know, we're academics, we're interested in the fundamental science, we spend a lot of time uh, understanding the materials and the mechanics aspects of these devices, publishing papers, educating students, but in terms of the research itself, uh, you know, that's the goal that, that we're uh, aiming toward. I think the excitement uh, really lies in two things for me. One is I like interacting with the students. So, you know, I think being a university pr professor, you know, there's nothing more uh, satisfying or exciting than teaching uh, students and mentoring them. And so that, that's one excitement. Uh, the other is the uh, feeling that we're developing now that uh, the technologies that we're working on are going to have a long-term positive uh, impact uh, on, on society, human health, and, and related issues. So there's a certain level of satisfaction that's growing over time that, that we're working on things that, that, that have real value beyond the, you know, the educational and the scientific aspects, but things that can go, go beyond that and be more broadly useful.